Start the recorder off. Okay. I think we're live. Probably on an advert break, but hello everybody <laughs> in the chat room. Good evening. Now, um, yes, we've got a huge panel lined up tonight of me and Jace. <laughs> Absolutely. See, I told you the uh, the universe would cave in if you try and add me and Andrew on at the same time. Yes, we tried, and uh, <laughs> it didn't work. It's like um, it's like when you try and bring two magnets together, two opposing magnets. It's, yeah, uh... you forced him somewhere down the M4. <laughs> now, anybody in the uh, on the recording and on the uh, in the chat room should see the uh, got a new camera. So, hello to the new camera at the top, and I can actually switch cameras between that camera and uh, this other camera here. So kind of almost professional with two cameras. <laughs> so all we need now is a camera at your side, and then, uh, then we're better. Yeah, and it is a much better higher resolution camera as yeah. well. I've, I've still got my trusty Microsoft Live Cam, which I've had for about, must be almost as long as I've had the PC, about five or six years, I think. Actually, I've just switched the cameras back, and it looks like it's frozen to me. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> it is. <laughs> That'll, that'll teach me for messing. Let me just it see will. If unfreeze that. Right, that one's working. Let me try the other one. Yes, better. Right, we're unfrozen now. Right, um, so like I said, it's just us. And who better to talk about the latest Apple stuff uh, than uh, Jason Coombs from TDL Mobile? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think you've definitely drawn the short straw there. But I should, I should do my best. I, I, I think I'm pretty impartial, so I should, I should do my yeah. best. And plus, we, we, there is more than just um, uh, Apple news as well. There's a whole, whole load of stuff that's that's out there. Um, so we'll start. We'll start with the with the Apple stuff anyway. So. Let me start with um, the. Let's start with the mountain lion stuff. It's probably this is probably the least interesting thing for you, for you, I guess. But I don't, I don't know how. Did you see any of the keynote? Or have you, I suppose you just read or lots of blog posts pe as people write about it. Yes, I've tried tried to catch up today because I, I I know I got your email earlier this morning um, saying you might, might need me, um, and I did try and follow a, a bit of the the Twitter stream yesterday. Mm. Um, but no, I didn't. I didn't keep up it necessarily in, in kind of any kind of real time. But yeah, your way. There was a tech head stuff today, wasn't there? As uh, this week as well. Yes. Yeah. Quite a lot. Quite a lot been going on at the moment, especially um, Microsoft making some some big Azure announcements. Oh, exciting stuff. Yes. <laughs> leave that. Leave that stuff up to Mary Jo Foley. Yes. Okay. Well, we can we can come back come back and talk to that uh, talk about that stuff later in the show. Oh, I got. We've got. Um, oh, we could have a special guest joining us. Let's see if I can uh, bring this through. Bring this guest in. No, I don't think he, maybe he's not online yet, but we'll invite him. So we should have a, a guest joining us shortly. Um, let's uh, wait for his Skype to come online. Oh, I should also send the link out to the live stream as well, shouldn't I? So if anybody knows we're live, I'll just send that out. I hope everybody likes their better camera tonight. What did anybody think about the having the video? I don't know. There's quite a few views of the video, so people are using the video option. So it's quite a, another way of watching the show or listening to the show. Just send this link out. Oh, that's bad. Okay, I've tweeted the link link out now. So I'll keep my eye open for the uh, guest to appear, and then we can <laughs> figure out the shadows. Yes, that's right. So uh, actually, this this guest as well also be, uh, be able to talk iOS stuff as well. So that should take the pressure off you there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> right. Let me. Uh... 
Oh, and just an update. Uh, Dangle says uh, the Ustream feed is working in Safari on the iPad on the same page of the chat. Oh, that's quite good because I could never get that to work before. So uh, th that's definitely good. So if you go on your iPad onto the live page, you should be able to get the whole thing in, in one go. That's really good. Right, so I think what we'll do then was we'll just we'll just catch up on a few other bits and pieces before we um, while we wait for uh, anybody that's going to join us and talk about the iOS stuff. Um, now, this, another one that I know you love, but this maybe I'll get this for the Windows Phone. The um, Amazon Cloud Player it was announced today. Uh, I don't know if you've you've seen this, but it's it's not something we can get for you. For in the UK yet, but it might be something that will come to uh, other devices soon. Yes, yeah, I saw. Um, I was just trying to <clears throat> just trying to pick it up. But yes, I saw your um, announcement today that that was coming. Um, I mean, certainly, a Amazon seems to be kind of in this um, no man's land in a way at the moment, in that they've got all this great new stuff that's launching in the states, but none of it seems to be coming over here. Um, particularly fast. I mean, I think the flame, so the um, Kindle Fire is not out properly over in the UK. Yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they do. They do. We're doing a lot of good stuff, and then we just don't seem to get most of it. Yeah, and I, I, was, I don't know we're going off at a slight tangent, but I was having this conversation on Twitter the other day about about. I still feel Sky's got this stranglehold over the UK in a way, um, because we're still, although the streaming services are starting to appear. Um, it almost feels like um, we're kind of still second best in terms of having, I mean, you know, in the States, it's such a, a, a bigger market and you can pretty much choose any service that you want and be able to, um, you know, stream pretty much up to date movies and TV shows. And and um, whereas, again, you know, in the UK, we seem to be still a, a little bit out of touch, which is which is a shame, I think. Yeah, I think you're right, because... Um... Since I've been playing with um, Netflix this week, and uh, they've got a trial subscription, so I, I've had a go at that, and the, system, the, the whole system works great. But this, I, I was kind of expecting more content, and I know I've had a few tips from various people, including um, Danglis as well, about how to to sort of use a different IP system so that you can, you know, to get the US feeds. But uh, I'm just surprised. I, I thought there'd be better quality of content on there. And and uh, and as I say, as Rich said, it's the the bandwidth is still a problem. Although I must admit, Netflix seems to quite work quite well on on the variety of bandwidth. Yeah, because um, uh, as I've been discussing this week, our, our Sky subscription came to an end, and I've been thinking about investing a small amount into either maybe Netflix or the film. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to go for yet. But certainly, when we looked at it before, um, we were we were trying to rent a movie, which in the end we I think we ended up renting uh well i think we ended up actually not bothering in the end but um it was available on the on the, the sky store um but wasn't available on netflix and wasn't available on on love films so um it's like um <clears throat> again you know coming back to my point about amazon if you're in the states and you're an amazon prime customer you get a free streaming now it's not every movie um there's still some that you have to pay for or in terms of renting once or or purchasing but you know they get quite a good selection of stuff just just through having an amazon prime subscription which which we've got mm. you know it'd be great to have something like that that you know is kind of value add and um i mean i know that the um i mean it's good to see getting back to your original point <laughs> you know it's good to see amazon um spreading out across multiple platforms with their with their cloud player and you know where you can upload you know your own music or music that you purchase as um uh, goes straight into that um, that cloud storage, so it's certainly a good service. And I um, I was thinking the other day if um, with Microsoft rebranding their video and music services as the Xbox, it would be amazing if they included um, the Zoom um, Pass in a, in with the Xbox Live Gold, which isn't cheap. Um, but I just wonder. I think uh, I kind of as I thought about it more, I I just wonder whether or not. The reason why Microsoft might not do that is because of its uh, as it kind of gets cozy with the other content providers that it's bringing to Xbox. If that could potentially cause a conflict, if they just offered their own gold service in with a movie streaming service. Yeah, yeah, I know what I mean. Uh, that is an issue. We'll come back to that in a moment. Let's see. Have we got uh, a guest there? Yep, I'm here. Hey, it's Jose. <laughs> hey, stranger, yes, it how is. you doing? 
I'm good. How are you guys doing? Oh, good. It's great to get you on. Um, I know it's short notice, but uh, that's it's great that you could join us. It's kind of getting the old TBDL mobile crowd back together. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just still down two. So say that again. I said uh, still down two. We still need uh, John and Sheldon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, well, we were just sort of talking about the um, – we were going to talk about the Apple stuff, but before we did that, we were just talking about the sort of the streaming services for the UK and um, how – in fact, what started off is the Amazon Cloud Player uh, was announced today for the iPhone and iPod Touch, and that's something that's not available here. Is, it, uh, is that something you're, you're using or you're going to use? Um, I mean, we, we've had Cloud Player for a while, but I never really used – it uh I, I remember i bought uh, a couple of mp3 albums just to uh, try it out because when when you buy the mp3 albums through amazon you can use it and it doesn't hit your storage something to that extent but i never ended up really using it uh, um and especially with uh google music i know obviously it was introduced later but um you know google music obviously syncs up um with um uh, Galaxy Nexus, and it, it's it's a much smoother experience for me personally. Um, but yeah, I never really got around to you using uh, Amazon Cloud Player. Hmm. Well, I, th- I think today it was the iPhone and the iPod Touch version, so I think the iPad version was out already, and and there was obviously an Android version. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it's, the streaming services are, are getting there. It's just I thought we we, we just. From a UK point of view, there just needs to be more content. I'm going to try the uh, the DNS tricks to see what the Netflix content's like in the US compared to the UK version. But as a, as a service via the Silverlight streaming, it works pretty well. Yeah, I, I mean, what what I like, like about uh, some of the streaming services like Google Music and Amazon Cloud Player um, is that it's still content that you own. Right? I mean, I know there's this huge um, kind of movement for for streaming companies to provide uh, for example you know you guys have spotify which we have over here now as well uh you know netflix uh hulu so all, all these streaming services that are able to stream content for you but for me for example that you know, I, I'm, I'm a huge music fan and I, I i still buy cds i actually don't buy mp3s um i still buy cds and, and rip them um so i have a, a, a massive music collection um which I want to tap into, right? So I, I don't want to sign up to a streaming service so I can stream new music. Uh, what I want is exactly what, what Google Music and, and uh, Amazon's Cloud Pair provides, which is that I want to have my own content streamable to me, right? So I, I used to do that through my um, through my Windows Home server, but now with, with Google Music, anytime I rip a new album, it automatically gets pulled into, uh, into Google's Cloud and and I can access it anywhere I want, um, my own content, rather than than searching yeah. through the streaming services, which may not always have have the the music that I necessarily purchase. Yeah, I think it's especially it, if, maybe if you like them, so you know mainstream chart stuff. But if you like anything, if you like your early seventies prog rock, maybe that's not you know that's the, the, it's better to rip it yourself. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, and lots of people saying in the chat room about uh, you know, Sky's domination could come to the end, uh, but it, it's still a problem with we have over in certainly UK with 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 broadband speeds that that, that affects services like Netflix that have, and the quality they can offer. Yeah, I think um, I mean the problem with Sky is that you know it's available UK wide. You know, we and probably I guess yourself, Ian, we haven't got access to Virgin Cable, so there is no. There, there is no competition. You know, even if you wanted to go with a, comp- a competitor like Virgin, we can't. So you're left with the streaming services, which, again, in a rural area, bandwidth isn't up to it. And if it is, you've probably got bandwidth caps that you've got to deal with. And um, <clears throat> so ultimately, you know, you, you, you end up with kind of these lackluster services or you have to go with Sky. And it's, it's a shame. But as, as I mentioned in the chat, you know, we, we've been on a VIP feedback program because they are concerned that, their numbers are either dropping or not increasing how they'd like and and pretty much the, the feedback from us and, and the majority of the people on the program was that you know we don't want to pay for a full package we want to be able to pick a la carte the channels that we want 
you know, we'd quite happily pay for Sky and pay for HD, but we don't want to have to go with a base package, which has like 100 channels that we're not interested in. Yeah, that's always a problem, isn't it? That's that's a problem. I, I mean, I, I kind of got, by having the HD package, you know, I've ended up with the Formula One, but I, I would hate to have to get all sort of 12,000 Sky sports channels just to get one, um, you know, Formula One channel. And I don't care about the football stuff. So, yeah, it is an issue, though. Yeah, definitely. I think... Um, <clears throat> now, sorry, I think, t- uh, touching base uh, on that, sorry, like, on the whole thing. a la carte thing. Yeah, the, the whole a la carte thing, I, I think it works more in theory than in practice because, it, it you know, it, it can only... Cable companies or, or content providers can only take it so far when it comes to a la carte, right? So let's say you're interested in a single channel. It, it's not going to be profitable. It's not going to make business sense for them to say, okay, we'll, we'll give you this single channel for, you know, five pounds a month. Um, because yeah, obviously they're the, the, to support the infrastructure, customer support, even something as simple as a uh, building is going to, is going to, to uh, eat up, up that five pounds a month, in, you know, in, in probably a day. Um, it, it's, it's not, mm-hmm. it doesn't make any business sense. Um, I, I can, understand saying to a certain extent so you have let's say a base package that that gives you you know basic channels whatever those channels may be for i don't know 30 pounds a month uh, I, I don't know what the pricing is over there but <clears throat> and then on top of that let's say you you, you want uh, you mentioned formula one you know maybe formula one's part of the you know they can call it the sports package um or or you know certain premium channels and they, they can have these other kind kind of sub packages, which uh, granted, it's still more than a la carte, right? You're still getting more than just formula one, one, but I think, I think that would be a good compromise between what we're asking for in terms of a la carte versus what makes business sense, right? What's actually cost effective for, because uh, old, some of these are for profit companies. They're not going to give this stuff away for free. They're not going to take a hit uh, to, to give it to, to the consumers. But I, I think, there is kind of a middle ground and and maybe formulating these these kind of sub packages that don't give you the you know like you said again the twelve thousand channels, um, but but still may give you more than 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 you like. Um, so you know a sports package you know maybe will give you, uh, you know uh, football basketball soccer and Formula One hockey whatever and maybe you're not interested. In, in hockey and basketball uh but you get formula one you get you know the the, the content content that you want you you may have to pay for a couple extra channels there but from a business perspective it's a lot e- easier for them and it makes a lot more business sense for them to package this up, up and offer it like that rather than say hey we're going to give you just formula one for five pounds a month yeah um and even from a consumer perspective when you break it up like that ultimately it's probably going to end up being more expensive if if you if you pick and choose your channels and, and build them up, um, you're probably actually going to end up paying more than if you just take uh, um, you know a, a, a package. Yeah, I mean there should be a balance. And to, and to be fair to Sky, I mean, like you said, I've got the I haven't got the sports package, but because I've got the HD package, you get the Sky F1 HD. So I do get the Sky without paying for the sports package. So that in that respect, it's not worked out too bad. But uh, it is a lot of you still paying out a lot of a lot of money and um, for a lot of channels that I wouldn't necessarily use. But yeah, there's got to be some kind of compromise so they can maintain profitability. But I think the biggest issue I have isn't really around even the fees. It's around the things like the bandwidth. The bandwidth is a, is a, you know I, I, we we all seem to be struggling with and uh, that prevents new services from challenging the established players. Yeah, I mean that's that's a different story. I mean that's that's not. An issue we we encounter over here. We don't have um, when it comes to to landline uh, um, <clears throat> broadband. We you know we don't really have any caps. We obviously have those caps for mobile broadband. Um, but uh, I do hear that argument a lot of of getting a la carte channels uh, here in the U.S. and and you know that's I've never really understood that argument. I've understood it from hey this is what I want right. I only watch three channels and i want to pay only for these two channels but you know it's you got to look at it from both sides yeah um but yeah i mean once once you once you start hitting those issues with with throttling and and bandwidth caps and whatnot that's a whole different story which i'm I'm glad we haven't had to deal with that yet 
too much in the U.S. because there are some some cable providers that have kind of uh, started to to use those practices. But uh, I think for the most part, we're still pretty free and open as compared mm. to what what you guys encounter in the U.K. Yeah, no, so we're not so much bad on caps, really. It's just the actual available bandwidth. Some people like Gary have got a fantastic bandwidth, and uh, I think there's a few people in the chat room always bragging about how much bandwidth they've got. But I know there's like my line, I can get a meg, and that's the end of it. You know, there's no competition, no no options. That's that's the done deal. Right. Um, now, obviously, this week there's uh, been a bit of news from uh, from the US yesterday. So I'm glad you could join us this because uh, I was relying on Jace to be giving all our Apple information, and I thought that would be a sign of push. <laughs> <laughs> so there was quite a bit of uh, there was the Apple keynote uh, yesterday as we record this on Tuesday. I don't know how much of the keynote you saw, um, and you're kind of at half and half camps, aren't you? You kind of use some Apple products, but you're more of an Android guy, really. Aren't you? Yeah, uh, I. I- I became an Android guy. Um, you know, it, it wasn't. I, I didn't think that was going to be the case, but yeah, I actually ended up kind of going with Android and, and sticking to it. Um, but uh, you know, that doesn't. I've always been able to appreciate what comes out of Apple and and Microsoft and yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm always. I'm always. I think. I, I'd like to say I'm always fairly critical. Yeah. Well, that, that's the same, Jason, the same as well. So um, I don't know, to how, do you guys, have you, did you see the, let's start with the iOS 6. Um, any thoughts on that? Jay, shall you get your thoughts first? Um, I, I, the, main, the main thing that I, I kind of thought um, was something that um, Harris and I have discussed before is that, you know, iOS is getting to that point where it's it is really mature and, you know, it's a really stable platform and it's kind of, kind of almost where where do they go really it seems like um from what i saw that the ios 6 stuff was you know really just again relatively minor incremental updates i think the the biggest two changes was was the enhancements to the siri service and um also i think probably one of the biggest announcements was the fact that facetime is now available for use over um over the carrier as without having to be on on wi-fi Yes, and I, th- I think my, my sort of feelings for it, there was a few things uh, like the, repl- just little things like maybe replying with a message. Uh, I was like, it does that already. And then I checked it. No, it doesn't. It's just that I've been on Android for a while and, and it, that does that. And uh, so, of course, they were touting that as a new feature. So, yeah, like you said, I, th- I think it, there's a lot of incremental changes to it. Um, and it's hard for them just to, unless they do a sort of a Windows phone and start from scratch, it's going to be difficult for them to do much more i don't know jose what do you think yeah i I, at this point i mean we we know that apple's happy with what they have um in terms of of the operating system and for for a lot of people um i I think specifically tech enthusiasts uh it feels like ios is getting a little long in tooth right there's not much happening there um i mean the additions that, that they made or that they announced for ios 6 now this is iOS 6 now, right? I'm sure there's going to be other stuff that they haven't announced yet that comes along with the iPhone 5 uh, later this year. But um, obviously, they're putting a, a lot of emphasis on Siri. Siri's being, being uh, going to be supported on the iPad now. There's going to be the Ice Free Siri that's going to be built into uh, into cars over the next 12 months. Um, you know, the the app launcher, uh, Facebook integration. Uh, I, I think actually the FaceTime over cellular network works is, is nice but again it's kind of just taking what apps like tango already did right and and they're finally and kind skype, of enabling yeah. that that feature in skype right mm-hmm. um but other than just these little tweaks and additions and, and stuff it's, it's a lot of stuff that makes sense right it's a lot of stuff that i'm sure a lot of people feel like should have been there a while ago and it's like okay awesome it's finally here it, it's it's giving that extra little foot functionality, even though they're very small things, uh, they're things that do make your life easier, right? Like the do not disturb mode is, I think the do not disturb mode is actually yeah. pretty cool. Um, especially the feature where like, okay, that the, where you can allow quote unquote emergency calls in, right? If you get the call from the same number within three minutes, it lets the second call go through um, so that you don't miss anything that that's urgent. And the time um, window. So the, those little, yeah, it, 
exactly. So those things, they're extremely small, small, but I think that's a great example of Apple find, fixing a problem that we didn't really knew was a problem, right? So uh, obviously FaceTime over cellular was a very obvious thing, right? The, the whole uh, decline and respond with the message, very obvious. But the do not disturb, I don't know how many people really thought about that as being an issue that, that want, they, they want to resolve. I mean, I'm sure a lot a lot of people encountered, you know, the, the issue where like overnight maybe they got woken up by a random text message or email. Um, but I, I'm not sure if anybody really thought, man, Apple should make a do not disturb mode that allows, you know, everything except uh, a call, two calls within three minutes to be muted. Um, so I, I think that's that's still Apple being Apple and, and, and finding those pro problems that we didn't know existed. Um, but the, the interface itself I think is getting a little dated, right? And I, I think that has become even more evident now with Android jumping to ice cream sandwich um, that we saw such an amazing transformation from Android being this still very kind of mundane, very robotic Android-like interface to being this very fluid, dynamic, and, and beautiful UI. Uh, um, and, and uh, you know, I think... Uh, Windows Phone was the best example of that, where they completely abandoned Windows Mobile and, and came out with Metro. Um, and I, I think the combination of those two things, the combination of Windows Phone and Ice Cream Sandwich, are starting to make iOS uh, look dated, mm. uh, look a little too rudimentary. Um, and I, I don't know if Apple's actually going to do anything about that, though. You know, I, I, Apple's very stubborn uh, when it comes to that i think they're they're happy with the way things are because obviously they're still selling uh devices obviously people are still happy with it and at the end of the day when people move, jump into uh, from a feature phone to a smartphone i personally think the best option the best direction is still ios uh just because of its simplicity yeah uh, because it, there, there there is no learning curve right it's icons that you push <laughs> it, yeah, that that's it you know i think so for, the for the enthusiast um you know android's great but like for, for, for my wife i i wouldn't give her an android phone it's just too there's too many variables on it for, for me i love the galaxy note and uh but it, it still can it still does things like discharge the battery or occasionally crash and there's there's things it still does which i, I can handle um, but I wouldn't like just say say a user at work, you know, one of the directors. I wouldn't want to give them one necessarily. I know if we give them an iPhone, it's an iPhone, and it'll just work and do the job. And I think that's that sort of safe environment is something that Apple do really well. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And um, I I know uh, Jason and I have had conversations about how, how simple Windows Phone is, but I don't think Windows Phone is is a very simple i think once you get used to it you obviously know how to navigate and get through it but uh, from from a new user perspective i still think ios is is the best option and i think it, it's that reason that that reason that apple is going to have to not change the interface you know mm -hmm. they'll continue to make small improvements like they have with ios 6 rather than uh, oh and and you know obviously it, a lot of enthusiasts say oh they need to overhaul the ui completely which that also isn't logical, uh, but you know, s small little changes would be uh, would be nice. But uh, again, I, I think they're they're going to go to the point of hey, it, it's simple, it works. People aren't overwhelmed with these options and and uh, you know, fancy little widgets and all that. It's just you know, here's your icons. You can organize them in folders. You touch it to launch the app. You touch a button to go back home. Done. And what do you think about uh, the Passbook app? It looked look quite nice, sort of storing boarding passes, because I use those when I travel, and you, you end up having to scrabble to find the email that, for your boarding pass, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think I think the boarding pass feature itself is, is, is pretty cool. I mean, there's, uh, again, it's another example of there being services out there already that do that for you, um, but obviously having it integrated on, on your phone. I I, I love the location awareness piece of it, right? So that it, it's it's aware where you are. So once you get to the airport, it automatically loads it up on your home screen for you. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Because the right? way so that not, I mean, there's. Sorry, go ahead. 
Go ahead. <laughs> We've got a Skype in here. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll go. I was just going to say the way that um, I, I liked on the Windows phone is that when I got these things, you could pin them to the start screen so you could find them again i found on uh, on my iphone i and i had to search at the at the gate each time for the for the boarding pass and that kind of thing it was a bit frustrating yeah i was i was going to say that i must admit i mean you know i can i can see the usefulness of the passport feature but i do you know i kind of in a way i kind of wondered why why would you need that because you've got normally third party apps that are probably more specialized at, at giving that kind of service so you know again Windows Phone, as an example, you know, you've got the British Airways app, you've got the Qantas app, where, as you say, you can just pin those boarding passes to the screen. It seemed, seemed in some ways, a, a bit of a, a strange addition, um, but it brings know, them maybe... all together. I think that's what yeah, I and the yeah, location awareness that uh, Jose was just about to tell us about. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did. I, I, yeah, something else. Yeah, that's. I mean, certainly location service. I think is definitely a a, a booming um, future. Um, add-on that you know can have so many uses and an answer to rich yeah which rich in the chat room just says i bet you had your body pass with you no i didn't because i couldn't print it from where i was staying so this was i was very <laughs> searching for it so, anyway go ahead jose yeah and and yes there are three part, party third party apps out there that do this for you but uh, again to ian's points it's all about bringing it together right so instead of having your Qantas and your british air Ways app and your Virgin Atlantic app, you know, you just have the the passbook. Um, because I mean, I know I don't necessarily fly the same airline uh, everywhere. I uh, I'd like to, but you know, sometimes you know you get a better deal on a, on a different airline. Um, and yeah, I, honestly, my, my my what impressed me was that that location awareness piece, right? Where, where I don't have to launch the app at all. All, right so once i'm at the airport it's just on my home screen already uh, on the lock screen so i have the option to just launch it without even having to launch an app without having to unlock my phone it's just there um and obviously passbook is is more than just about having your boarding pass um for your flight um it has your your loyalty cards which again i know there's there's uh, i use key ring so I, I know there's third party apps out there but having it all in one location obviously now with it being integrated into the iphone it, it's going to push uh, a lot of providers whether it's, it's airlines whether it's loyalty um card companies um you know trains whatever it's it's going to push them to um obviously have that hook in there so you know it's it's going to be so much smoother and so much more integrated through the iphone through passbook than it has been through all these other third-party apps i think um and, and i appreciate this is the same this can be the same for said for um, android and windows phone but i think the best the, the best tweet i saw yesterday and apologies i can't remember who said it so i can't give any credit but was um, something like see all those people leaving the keynote they're all the third-party developers that have just had their services integrated <laughs> into the phone <laughs> <laughs> that's something they always used to say about microsoft was it microsoft developers is it, at some point yes. it gets integrated Yes, yeah, exactly. I know. I know similar things were said when when kind of Twitter and Facebook stuff got integrated with the with the Mango update. But I think yeah. just going back to our original point, I think Jose made an excellent point. You know, iOS is is that almost perfect example of it isn't broken. They don't need to reinvent it. They're still, you know, they're still selling like hotcakes. And and Apple's stance is always about giving customers what they don't. Uh, sorry, what they don't even know they want, you know. So even if the customers were screaming that they wanted something new and different, it doesn't necessarily mean that Apple would be, you know, giving it to them. I, th I think at the end of the day as well, their customers are people like me and Jose, uh, really. We're the sort of the edge of that. The, 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 it's the, the main consumers don't want to see a massive change. It's a bit like with the Galaxy Note. I was hoping for a big change when uh, Ice Cream Sandwich was on there, but there wasn't. It was only a minor upgrade but I, to the UI. But I can see why they did that because they wouldn't want the whole, you know, the the whole of their users suddenly to come up with something totally new and they can't use it. So they, they've got to be careful about um, so sort of not jumping too far. Yeah, exactly. And I think you know, only only really when you get to that point whereby um, a, a bit like uh, I know it's a terrible example because of the, the market share it had, but something like Windows Mobile, where you know I remember when I first joined Twitter and started following people like yourself, where you know you'd, you'd been on Windows Mobile but were abandoning it for iOS, and I think 
that that kind of move was what made Microsoft stop and and take note. Mm. And I think it would probably take something the same with the iPhone before um, Apple are going to risk upsetting the Apple cart. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think you're right. Um, And just before we move on on the iOS stuff as well, interesting to see that they're not supporting the original iPad, but the 3GS is supported, which I thought was was strange because I kind of thought that they, they were pretty similar hardware. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing. Um, I think for both, probably for both John and myself. I don't, did John ever upgrade his iPad? Because I, I, I know John and I still had the original iPads. So, yeah, it, it, it surprised me. I mean, I think that the original iPad would, would have gotten the iOS 6 upgrade. But then again, I, I think both John and I have talked about how our original iPads, even when we upgraded to iOS 4, seemed to be sluggish. So, um, you know... Maybe iOS is just really getting that heavy that uh, it's it's really going to require that much more um, power to run smoothly. Because uh, uh, you know, I, I just I have iOS uh, you know five whatever the latest is for, for the iPad, and it's still sluggish. I mean, it it definitely does not run as smoothly as when I first got the iPad. Right, it just seems a bit of a strain. I can imagine you know I can imagine them supporting the the 4 and the 4S, etc., but and, and maybe dropping the 3GS, but anyway, it's just, um, you know, it's just, it's just what it is, and, and I, I guess that, uh, you know, people will upgrade or, or not, whatever, does I, I imagine they'll still push the security updates out. Yeah, well, I, I think it may have more to do with what they're still selling, because the 3GS is still uh, a phone that they're marketing, right? It's still a phone right. that yeah, they're producing and selling. That, yeah. Yeah, and the original iPad is not, right? So now you can get the iPad 2 or the new iPad. Um, you can't get the original iPad uh, from Apple. So, so, you know, maybe it's just, uh, I'm guessing their practice is, hey, we're going to support whatever we have out on market right now. Anything that's not currently being sold, you know, is not going to get uh, the updates. Hmm. I mean, I mean so, Apple's upgrade policy is pretty good, as we talked about with Android and Sure, I think it was last week. Was at least when they say the update's coming out, you generally can get it. You're not. It's not like with the, uh, you know, Android phones where you may be checking the check for updates button every, every day, or the <laughs> same for Windows phone users as well. Yeah, right. I think. Um, I, th- I think uh, the uh, the iPad one not being supported with the iOS six is going to pen into insignificance if the the rumors are to be believed when Windows Phone eight gets announced. <laughs> Yes, I mean, I think it's going to be some serious, yeah. so potentially some serious pain. But I thought, um, again, the other thing that I saw people um, saying was, was a big deal. I, I don't necessarily have any direct opinion on it, but the the dropping of Google Maps in favour oh, of their yes, own, I've, which I think was TomTom. Yeah. I think they've adopted TomTom, haven't they? I yes, think I saw they have. Yeah, they have, and their shares were up twelve percent this morning. I think. I mean, certainly, I know TomTom's losing market share rapidly as people are, are, are switching to mobile devices or, um, you know, buying cars with integrated sat naps. I know they've been certainly looking for, for other revenue streams. So, but I think um, I, I thought it's quite interesting that that you know it's completely dropping of Google. I mean, I guess I'm sure there'll be third-party apps, but you know, it's always been one of the big things with I, I, iPhone is the the integration with Google Attitude and everything. Well. Uh- I don't know if it surprises me that much, though, because uh, obviously the Google Maps on iPhone was not great. You know, the the, the turn-by-turn navigation, Google decided to keep it for themselves. You know, that, that's only on Android. And and the, the turn-by-turn navigation on Android is awesome. It's amazing. You know, you use Google Maps. But Google Maps on, on, on iPhone um, stayed the same. You know, it was still that just top-down view, and it gave you directions. But there was no action actual navigation function um you know for, for actual navigation you still had to buy a third party um application uh which could have been pricey so apple did need to do something on that front right it was definitely lacking that it was lacking off the shelf turn by turn navigation capabilities and um you know i think it makes sense for them to do it because it, it was obvious that google wasn't going to to allow that part of android uh or part of Google Maps, I guess, be, go outside of Android. Um, and I'm sure Apple probably didn't, we have no interest in, in using, leveraging uh, Google services or leveraging something that Android already has. So I think it made a lot of sense 
because I think it's it, it was long overdue actually for for Apple to finally finally integrate turn by turn navigation really off the shelf rather than have to rely on on some third party vendor. Yeah, and you kind of got three powerhouses of mapping now, haven't you? You've got Nokia, uh, Google, and uh, and TomTom, and those all used on three three mobile platforms as well. Mm. It's gonna, I think. Right. Um, it could potentially be interesting. It might not go this way, but you know, TomTom's always been, you know, a cross-platform. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not they, you know, how much that tie-in with Apple actually, you know, if it restricts them or if it um, puts them off, um, you know, having that cross-platform. Um, if if they get it on every iPhone, though, they don't have to worry about being cross-platform. Oh no, yeah, it, yeah, no, 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 I, no, I agree. I was just, think, I was, you know, I always hope that. TomTom Tom would come to Windows Phone because it's you know it's always been my my preferred um, sat nav of choice, having had it on Windows Mobile. But um, but yeah, you know certainly not saying it's wrong. I'm just interested mm. if that does happen, particularly with you know almost Microsoft doing a complete U-turn and and actually going completely almost almost all in with cross-platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think TomTom Tom, though, have, uh, you know they probably know where their their bread and butter is now for the next few years anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we'll move on to um, OS X Lion. Uh, not really a lot to talk about that. Most of it's been t- talked about already. Um, twenty dollars from the App Store. I guess it'll be twenty pounds when it comes as well. Um, I think the, the the one thing I think of interest in there that we, we probably have um, talked too much is the AirPlay mirroring is quite nice. So you can send the uh, sort of the, your Mac straight to Apple TV. Notification center is in there and iCloud syncing, but uh, nothing too exciting that would there. Would you say, guys? Yeah, I, I think it's interesting to see how they're handling um, updates, OS updates. Now, I think uh, to me that's the interesting part. Uh, um, you know that they're doing. Uh, I, I think that the version before this was also was it thirty dollars? It, it was pretty. Pretty cheap, I remember, and again, it was yeah, also it was, a download yeah. from from the store. Mm. It they're 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 starting to handle um, desktop OS updates the way that they're doing iOS updates, right? The way that they're doing mobile updates. Except in this case, they're charging you for it because I think honestly, it's because that's that's kind of what people are used to, right? Having to pay for full on OS updates. But if you look at the features that are being added. It's no different than getting going from iOS five to iOS six, right? It's, it's just these little feature additions. It's not a full overhaul. It's just kind of these these small little feature updates, it, and it just I can't help but think of you know a few years from now when we're so indoctrinated by free updates on our mobile that these will become part of what we expect of a full version of of an OS, right? Um, where we see the the incremental updates being, hey, you know, we already bought the OS. Why are you charging us for it? And and them start to have to either drop the price or, or even even do it free. Um, and then full on OS updates, you know, then obviously you you, you still pay for those because those are obviously a much larger body of work. Um, but I I think it's it's interesting to see that the the paradigm of mobile isn't just coming across across in app stores and uh, obviously windows 8 it's going to have the the windows 8 uh, mo- you know app store whatever it's called i don't know what it's called um and um you know we're, we're starting to see that paradigm shift on our desktops and not only through apps not only through services but even with with updates and uh mm. you know we'll see uh, it'll be interesting to see if microsoft takes a similar approach with windows 8 if they'll start kind of enabling and uh adding these small features for for these uh either small amounts or maybe even for free i think um i think i saw a tweet from ed bot yesterday saying that um there we go you know apple is apple is almost treating their their desktop operating systems as, as the same as their mobile yeah i think so yeah it's almost but the, the, the a lot of the features that are adding in are from Straight from iOS, aren't they? The messaging, notification center, tweets, and sort of Facebook integration, mirroring, iCloud sync. Yeah, there's a lot of mobile stuff going into there. But um, I have to say, I do like um, OS X. It's, it's you know, having run Windows Seven, Windows Eight now, and OS X. Uh, OS X is a, is a very 
It feels more of a lightweight OS for some reason. It kind of it's uh, kind of gets out of the way a little bit, perhaps compared to Windows 8. Seems very full on, maybe because it's all new. I don't know. It's hard to describe, but uh, I, I I like OS X to do, and I think. Um, some of these new features are nice, but there's not a huge amount in there. But it's it's the same with all Apple stuff. It's it is incremental updates, and it once they get the base product, and then it's in, incremental updates. Yeah, I mean, this is um, as I said when I was on with you last week. Here, this is what really worries me about Windows 8 in particular on RT is 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 Microsoft able to adapt? Because you know I think with RT people are going to expect these quick succession of incremental updates. And you know, Microsoft is its Windows operating system is is used to being on a three year um upgrade cycle. And you know, they the people just aren't gonna tolerate that. Yeah, I think we are into this yearly upgrade cycle now, aren't we? With people get I think we're getting used to mobile upgrade cycles and I think that's I think that's where um Windows RT is going to have to fit in with the with, with the mobile upgrade cycle and not the traditional desktop three year jobs. Otherwise, uh, it, it does get cause frustration, and we've just seen we see it with uh, with you know Windows Mo- Windows Phone. Mm. People just waiting for that. It's just it's it. People get frustrated with it. Yeah, and I guess uh, it's you know the big question mark really is 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 Microsoft able to maybe service um, Win RT in terms of the the underlying. Um, language not windows rt um god really wish they hadn't done that um but yeah if they're able to service and update win rt on the x86 platform outside of the main operating system cycle it's because then they could you know enhance add enhancements to the metro environment without necessarily changing the underlying um desktop yeah part I, of it which i are, think so I think- I think they'll try and keep. I think that'll get updated because it's it's basically like it's it's a framework, isn't it? And that just needs that does need a lot of work. And I'm sure there'll mm. be updates on that. Um, so anyway, back up on on OS client, it's nice upgrades, and I think it it makes um, a fairly polished OS uh, continue to be polished. And uh, it is, I'll, I'll be interesting to see how it because Windows 8 and, and OS X aren't really exactly comparable, but it's interesting they're coming out at similar times and um, you know very different ways of attacking the same issues. Mm. And also I think that um, <clears throat> it's interesting seeing you know AirPlay continuing to get in developed because I think without any doubt the smart glass is Microsoft's play in that area. Yeah. Um, and certainly AirPlay at the moment is, you know completely sets the standard as everyone says it. You know it really does just work and it's that's that's Apple's strength, you know, it's, it's their, they come out with these proprietary systems, but because they're proprietary, they, they do just work as opposed to the, the Microsoft approach and maybe to a point the Android approach where they try and keep it open and working with, you know, every device under the sun and, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work that cleanly. And I think, uh, interesting with, with the AirPlay, what they're trying, what they're kind of doing with that is, is, is attacking the sort of the t- sort of apps on the TV just using that, aren't they? Instead of there's the, there was there was rumours that there was going to be uh, SDKs for the Apple TV, but there isn't. So if you want to get an app on your Apple TV, you either mm. do it from a Mac or you do it from an iPad, and that's their way rather yeah. than mirroring and uh, sorry, we have the smart glass and all the SDKs and that kind of thing. Yeah, and and also just coming back to my point about AirPlay, the <clears throat> as a Twitter recently, uh, my son's schools have all been have been supplied with iPads, and they were using it the, the other day. He was telling me to to go around and take pictures, and then they were transmitting it via AirPlay onto the Apple TV. And it was, you know, they all just kind of knew how to do it. And you know, if my son that's completely shielded from the yeah. Apple world, you know, even he knew exactly, you know, what he was doing and and how it worked, and you know, and what it was all about. So you know, it just goes to show that it's a, a really a really strong service. Mm. Let's talk uh, hardware now uh, before we just finish off on the Apple stuff. So um, the Airs were upgraded. There have been lots of rumors about different upgrades on that. So the Airs get Ivy Bridge processing um, up to 512 gig flash, USB 3, H-time, H- H- FaceTime HD and improved graphics. Um, the 11 and the 13 inch both upgraded. I, I, I really love my Air. I've got the 11 inch, a uh, couple of generations old now. But uh, I think, um, yeah, I'm tempted by one of these. The MacBook Pros just got a, a processor upgrade, but the real thing that they sort of unveiled to, to get a huge round of applause was the new MacBook Pro with the Retina. And I think it, I mean, it looks beautiful hardware, Apple always does. 
2880 by 1800 resolution. Jose, you going to stick one of those on your shopping list? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, you know, um, obviously really, really uh, high density resolution display. Uh, uh, but it's not, I don't know. I it, I didn't react the same way that, that everyone else seemed to. Uh, I mean, I'm going to head over to an Apple store and, and check it in person, obviously. But no, especially at that 15 inch size, if it was an 11 inch, yes, awesome. Yeah. Um, but obviously it probably wouldn't be that resolution solution at 11 inch but i've never been one to like you know large laptops and it's funny when like oh yeah and it's only four pounds i'm like four pounds are you kidding me that to me is like i i'm not willing to lug around four pounds of, uh in a laptop i mean i've always been uh the biggest laptop i've ever purchased was the um the vio z and that's just because it you know it it, it came fully spec'd out and it tops out at just over three pounds um, but that even I just mostly use at home. I, I mean, for the most part, I've I've stuck with uh, 11 inch form factors. So no, nah, I mean it's it's cool and everything. It excites me because uh, you know what this means. This just means that um, it's going to push everybody else in the industry. Um, so uh, it'll probably be a couple of years before they're able to, able to catch up. But you know that means that down the line. This is this is where we're going to start seeing, which is awesome. But as far as actually, you know, any any type of gadget lust for for the new MacBook Pro, not really. Jason, I guess, I'm guessing you're definitely not. It's not on your shopping list. You could buy it. You could buy it for. Um, I could. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't that price. Yeah, I couldn't afford one, even if I wanted one. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm just sitting looking at the picture. You know, the hardware is just just beautiful. You know, that you know that's what they do well. Yeah, I mean, from from um, I mean, my I, I've got the air, the old, like I said, the original, not the original, the second gen air, the eleven inch one. I really like it, and I'm uh, sort of using that now. And um, I can even show the HD camera there. You go. No, <laughs> um, and, and I really like it, and it's the size that I like. So, like you, Jose, I think the fifteen would be too big for me because I like to carry this around. But during my day, in my day job, I have a seventeen inch. Uh, Sony laptop, which I use for the development and the Visual Studio stuff. So I do like having a big laptop, um, but I, I, I wouldn't, I couldn't f for work. I couldn't move on to, I, I, you know, I have to stick with Windows anyway, and I also couldn't justify the price as well. Um, so it's, I'm sure it'd be very popular, but it is kind of like the flagship model, isn't it? That, uh, that people will want to sort of the aspirational model, let's say, and uh, and then you know you got you come down to the airs. Uh, that are a bit more realistic price, and uh, I'm tempted with the new one because I, I struggle with video editing on the on this on this MacBook. Yeah. Um, well, and see for for video editing for anything that I need a large screen, I, I'm I'm doing that on my desktop. Um, but I, I do it when and, I'm out. Of uh, CES, I'm yeah. actually. Oh, I, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah even that, like I, I don't know. I've always been like even then. I, I've I've done fine on my 13 inch i don't know just the 15 maybe if it was a 13 inch i'd be more interested but i, I will tell you this though it did kind of give make me think twice I, I was thinking of buying a an hp uh a z1 and um i had actually already ordered it but they were on back order and that gave me time to think so i canceled it and i was just gonna uh order it from another place that that it was gonna be cheaper but, but it made me think about it twice now because this is uh, the hp z1 one is a 27 inch screen um running at at it's the resolution it's it's i can't, i saw uh, it's, uh, 20 i think it's i can't remember now yeah it, it's by 1440 basically it's it's mm. it's more than 1080 by 1920 whatever the equivalent of you know it's x by 1440 um which initially was like oh that's awesome you know it's 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 better than i have a you know, I, I have dual 24-inch 1080p monitors right now. So it's like, cool, you know, so it'll be a bigger screen, but high resolution. <laughs> and then I saw the resolution of the 15-inch MacBook Pro. I was like, okay, that that just makes me feel like the, the Z1 is just behind already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's perhaps like I, it's, it's like that aspirational thing, isn't it? The flagship model. Yeah. 
I, I certainly yeah, would. So. If I didn't travel around with, you know, like you said, four pounds is actually it doesn't sound a lot, but uh, when you're carrying a, a bag over your shoulder all day, traipsing around uh, exhibition centre, you you do want the lighter one. And so, yeah, I, I, as I've got a, a desk at, at work with the bigger screen, I only for for this stuff I need the smaller one so that the, the so the airs are fine for me. But it it is certainly nice. I can't wait to go and have a playing one and certainly drool over the, the the hardware. But I did look at the price. I think it's like one thousand seven hundred something. But by the time you add it up to sixteen gig of memory and nearly a terabyte of a flash storage, I think you're up to like two thousand five hundred pounds or something like that. <laughs> yeah, did I mean, in the US, I know it it starts at at uh, twenty nine. Twenty one ninety nine uh, mm. dollars in the U.S. That's what it starts at. Yeah, I think it's seventeen ninety nine over here. Is the um the the Apple um, laptops are they, are they all purely SSD now? The the, the, the Mac Pros aren't. aren't they? Uh, okay. Yeah. So the the, the Mac Pro Retina is in the air. So. They're, yeah, they're they're and it's not SSD. It's flash embedded flash. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's pretty fast, isn't it? I think the new ones are even faster than the old drives. Because this there has only got a slow processor in it, but the SSD, or so the flash makes it really fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it makes it makes a a significant uh, difference, right? Because and with an SSD, you obviously still go through the SATA controllers and all that, but uh, with embedded flash, I mean, it's it's like booting booting off of a off of a flash drive, basically, um, mm-hmm. or like in, in, in some type of embedded device. Basically, it's kind of the same concept as a tablet, right, as uh, like an iPad, um, mm-hmm. rather than, than using um, standard uh, SATA controllers and hardware. Um, it's it's all in there, which I think makes a, a pretty huge impact. And just uh, to mention in the chat room about the Mac Pros just getting uh, sort of being left behind now. I think that's the case. I think that the, the Apple are moving away from a sort of traditional desktop machines or tower machines. Yeah. I think the future is definitely mobile for them. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I I, I was actually hoping that they were going to announce a, a spec bump for the uh, Mac Mini. Um, because I couldn't remember when when the uh, when the the iMac event was if it was if if this was it or if it was the one in October, but I think October is the iPod iPhone mm. event, right? Uh, so I, I was kind of hoping for a, a Mac Mini spec bump because um, I, I've had this this kind of thought of to use a Mac Mini as as a media center, um, which I, you know I know a lot of people do, but I want to obviously I want to put Windows on it uh, um, from boot camp, um, and I was going to gut it and replace the IR sensor because the IR sensor on the Mac mini um, is proprietary. It only works with the front row remote control. Mm. Um, I was going to gut, you know, one of those USB IR or media center uh, IR sensors, swap it out. And I was going to just have the Mac mini be my, my media center, my HTPC running, running windows seven. Um, so I was, but, but I've been putting that off because like, okay, well, you know, let me, let me wait for the spec bump let me wait for the refresh but alas no spec bump. no um so i think that was probably all i want to go through on the apple news so it's quite a, a lot of a lot of stuff but uh all, all interesting incremental stuff and keeps them in the game doesn't it so uh, as, as, as good as they need to be i think you know, they don't really have to push too far they, they just need to keep incrementally improving it and, and they're and they're all set yep um, now go oh, one extreme to the other then. So from your uh, two thousand uh, seven hundred pound uh, Mac, uh, how about going to a uh, <laughs> a twenty nine pound Raspberry Pi? <laughs> so I got a few posts on this uh, this week, so I just wanted to mention those. Um, one I've put out today actually is a new thing I've been working on. And this is sort of an ongoing project. Is I've got. Um, the Raspberry Pi working as a BBC iPlayer server. And I've got, kind of got some PVR functionality built into this as well. So this is coming along. So basically what I did with this, two projects I've put together. Is one of them is a, a, a UPnP server. So you can use Raspberry Pi as a, as a server and you can from your from Windows Media Player or from Android or from um, something like Twonky on the iPad, you can then stream content stored on the uh 
on the Raspberry Pi via USB or on the flash card or whatever, and you can stream it over DLNA or UP, UPnP. So I got that working. So I thought, well, what would be interesting? We're combining that with the iPlayer project, the so I call the Get iPlayer. And um, so basically what happens now, you can do with this, is through the command line at the moment, and my next part of the project is to make this with a, a web interface, is that you can schedule recordings from BBC iPlayer, and it downloads them downloads the flash files and converts it to mp4 and then you can then stream them anywhere you want around the home or you can copy them to another device and uh, so i've kind of built that so the the links in the show notes with all the the posts the the details on it was kind of an ongoing thing but uh yeah it, it works and uh so it, it'll automatically download and say the formula one it'll automatically download it for you whenever you want it'll it, it'll check for you when it's ready it'll just bring it down and then you can then pick it up from any device so that's all on here that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's quite nice. I think it's all, you know, it's all free open source stuff. So, uh, Dangle says he's excited for the open source Amiga OS in development for Pi. That'd be great. Yeah, I used to love my Amiga. I think it's just, you know, it's, it's just amazing the things that people come up with for this device. You know, it's it's definitely got people excited, which is, you know, that was the original concept. You know, that was why it was designed. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. So that I think, oh, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, just to get it working. Um, go ahead. I was just say, I even saw a story today of someone uh, using it as the heart of a uh, a drone um, to be used in kind of uh, you know battlefields and stuff. Yeah, because the size of it and the fact you can just run, mm. you know Debian on it there, it's it's great. But yeah, I had it. To, you know, I've, so I've got I've got sort of two versions of this now with the SD card swapping the SD cards out I've got it as an Xbox media center and I've got it as a server just depending on which card I've got in there so you know I can imagine you could build these things and you've got your clients and you could have one as a server and you've got you could you for, for the price of a Mac <laughs> MacBook Pro you could have a lot of <laughs> you could have them coming out your ears <laughs> yeah it'd be great to see running the Amiga on it and um, so talking of um, Play 2 and media platform, I know Microsoft did a, another one of the amazingly long posts on the building Windows blog. <laughs> yeah, just, I, mean, I remember these from like Windows 7. They just got, you know, they just got longer and longer and with l less and less information actually inside them. <laughs> so did you see this one? The, uh, they posted that... Um, you know, detailed some of the sort of the media playback support in uh, in Windows 8. Yes, <clears throat> yeah, I did. Um, I did have a, a, a quick read through. I think um, uh, really it was kind of to highlight what was what was possible. Really, wasn't it with um, with kind of Metro apps and <clears throat> and also <laughs> kind of a, a nod in there again to Media Center of what what would be included if if you had the Media Center pack. Yeah, there's, there's quite they had a little chart in there that I thought was quite useful to show you which which formats would be supported with and without the pack yes yeah i still think um you know it's a shame that wtv files won't play back without without media center because you know that does limit limit you in a household you know as we said there's already enough of a barrier to people upgrading to their media center but if they then go upgrade and add the pro pack onto all their other media onto all their other windows 8 clients it's just it's a mm. huge barrier yeah um, but they, they showed some of the MKV in there. I'm just trying to have a quick MKV. I think I, MKV definitely works out the box because I've I've been I've been trying that. That's not, there's no problem with that. I don't think you need the the pack for that to work either. Uh, I, I in fact I've got that playing on the tablet, which we, as we talked about last week, I hasn't got it on. So yeah, I mean, it's, again the the, <clears throat> the MPEG one and two is a big omissions for the Windows RT system. Yeah, that'll have to. Um, if, if that so that yeah that so that is, is that not there in the RT? Did you say? No, um, it's it's got a no. It's got a column code exported on Windows RT, and it's got a no against ah. MPEG one and MPEG two. It's you know the, it, there goes all you you know copying over your DVD rips and stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, unless of course you've converted, which <laughs> let's face it, nobody's got Windows tablets anyway, so you've probably converted them already. <laughs> yeah. But that would that would mean that you would so. so um, Media files, media player, won't, uh, Windows Media Center files won't work on there, will they? No, that's it. Yeah, no, on that's RT I mean. at all. 
without the pro pack, but you can't get the pro pack on RT, can you? No, no, which, like I say, is going to be a, a big limiting. You know, it was mm. it almost kind of nullifies my argument of, of why I didn't go for the iPad, was because I wanted something that would fit in with our entertainment ecosystem in the house. And actually, <laughs> because it's an RT tablet, I'm really interested in again for the battery life and the yeah. always on and, and everything else. But actually, it's it's going to leave me in the same situation where I've got to think about converting stuff. Yeah. Well, that's that's yeah, that's that's disappointing. That I I, I forgot about that. And I know that you can't like um, Rich has no no media center on RT. Either, so you're gonna have to convert those files to MP4 or something. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm, I'd be, I'm gonna have to. See, the, the problem is we just can't even try this stuff, can we? So there's no there's nothing to, to 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 try it with yet. No, and I, I still you know I still there's this big question mark they haven't talked about yet of. of of you know how Windows RT devices are going going to work? Are, are they going to be um, an iPad style device whereby you synchronise media to it using some kind of synchronisation service? I guess maybe that's where SkyDrive fits into it. And or is it going to be a more leaning on the traditional side where you just copy your media over onto it and carry it around? Mm. I and think man- I th- manually synchronising it. I I think they'll go less on the on the synchronisation route and more on the SkyDrive type stuff. Yeah. Now, uh, Jose, I think because we've not spoke to you for quite a while, have you uh, played with the uh, release preview of Windows 8? What's, what's your thoughts on that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Key? No, I, 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 we, I think uh, actually, I think it may have been last time that, that we recorded TD on mobile that you know I talked about how I, I'm just not excited by Windows 8 at all. Uh, no interest in it. Um, I, I I don't understand the direction. Um, I understand the reasoning behind it, but um, not sure if the execution is is really there. Um, I, I understand that they have to be forward thinking, but I think they may have skipped a step here uh, personally, and especially as as a a media center enthusiast. Um, you know, extremely disappointed um, with that aspect of it. And uh, I have always, you know, upgraded to the latest. I, I even upgraded from XP to Vista with all the headaches that Vista gave us users, um, you know, but still still did it. Uh, but, but I think Windows 8 is going to be the one that I skip. Um, I, I have no interest in upgrading any of my machines to Windows 8, especially my HTPCs. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about this on the show like over the last quite a lot of, of months almost now. Is that yeah, I can't see as a as a HTPC. There's not a huge point in upgrading to to Windows 8 unless there's some great better apps come along. You know, maybe a Netflix and a BBC iPlayer and all that kind of stuff. So it makes the sort of compelling. But I can't see it to be honest. Well, not not if you're a media center user anyway. Yeah, I I don't see any reason for for media center users. I don't see any reason at all to upgrade actually because um, you, yeah you're you're not gaining anything whatsoever i think um the, the, as, as i said i think it was last week the one machine that i've seen on that has made sense is the hp touch Smart. and uh, you know even though it's an old touch Smart, it, it, it the windows 8 works really well on that and uh, i I can see the benefits on there on the desktop machine they've got, and even on my tablet PC, not as much. But to, so, I think for new machines that come out, an RT tablet maybe, or a, a, a new Windows 8 Intel tablet, it's it's going to be pretty good, especially if you've got touch and everything else. I just think that there is no real imperative for, to upgrade a, a, a nice setup media center system. Yeah, I mean, even even from a desktop piece, like okay, the Touch Mart you know has a touch screen. You Go through it and everything, mm-hmm. but uh, even then, I don't see. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess I just can't picture myself going from a keyboard and mouse to oh, hold on, let me reach out to my screen to swipe, and then back to my keyboard and mouse. No, uh, I think it, it, it's not a very logical transition. I think for tablets, obviously, it makes sense, and I st- still stand by my original statement that I think that there should have been two operating systems. Matter of fact, they did make two operating systems, right? They have Windows RT, which should be well. First of all, it should be Metro, but you know that should be their tablet OS. That that should be it, right there. Metro, 
for tablets done right and then you have windows 8 for desktops without not the stupid metro layer which makes no sense sorry Jason. I think, um, no sense no no i i i, <laughs> I agree i mean i am um, I'm, I'm kind of 50 50 i i actually get on okay using windows 8 on my on, on my laptop which is it's dual boot so i'm not i'm not able to use it 100 percent of the time um but i i totally agree i i i think they should have been two but i think the reason that they haven't done that is for the exact same reasons that Windows Phone isn't isn't selling. I think if they'd just done a Windows 8 RT tablet, that two years down the line, they'd they'd be sitting with two percent market share. I think this is the reason why it's on desktop is an all or nothing gamble. That what they they know the only way they're going to make inroads is that people end up hitting this environment because they've bought a new PC, and when they get used to it on the PC and they start to look to buy a tablet and they see something that they're used to and that they're familiar with that Microsoft hopes that their automatic choice will be um, a tablet. Because I think if, if, if they hadn't have done this, I think people would do what they currently do today. When they want to buy a tablet, they go and buy an iPad. I think, I think I that's think, a good I point. I think that's it. Yeah, and, but, uh, and it, is, it is a purely risky strategy. I, oh, yeah. I, you know, there's there's no denying it. And you know, even Steve Barmer said that this is you know they're kind of betting the farm on this really. But that's that's the reason. And I think even more than that, I think if it was in some ways, I think if it was possible for them to backport Metro onto Windows Seven, I think they would do it because they need because Windows Phone, you know, love it or hate it, I, I think it's I think it's a a, a good idea it was a good break it was you know a clean slate and a, and a new concept but it hasn't sold and i don't think it's not selling because it's it, because it's awful i think it's not selling because people buy an iphone well i'm glad that they can't backport to windows 7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, so, I think um, they need the they need the clean break, and uh, like I said, on the touch mark, I really like it. Desktop, it's okay, but I think we'll get used to it. And uh, yeah, as uh, as as I say in the chat room, it's going to be fascinating to see the outcome, and uh, we'll, as we get closer to to the release, we'll we'll see how it how it, it how it does. I think enterprises aren't going to touch it. And it's a consumer operating system, something we asked Microsoft to do a few years ago. So careful what you wish for sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I think, I think the, big, the big telling thing for me is I, I haven't put it onto our desktop PC. That's primarily because I don't use it so much anymore. So I'd be inflicted onto people that, you know, that without any benefit to myself. And, um, but also, I'm going to be really curious with, with all this massive... Um, blog posts about how they're cutting stuff out of Windows with licensing costs and taking Media Center out and this, that, and the other. I, I, I do still wonder whether or not they're going to come out with this really aggressive pricing on Windows 8, almost, almost like a Mac OS type cost. You know, thirty, forty dollars. Maybe. <laughs> because I, because well, I, I, think I don't think they need to do something. They need, they need to make it a, almost a no-brainer. Great. I mean. I, there's a massive media center argument for not upgrading, and when you don't upgrade your media center PC, there's a strong argument that that blocks it from the rest of your household because you won't be able to play that content without buying media center. Um, so I think you know they need outside of that media center circle, they need a reason for people to upgrade to it, and the the best way to do that is to make it as cheap as possible. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know if it's going to be at that thirty dollar range, though, because. Right now, the promotion is if you buy a Windows 7 machine after a certain date, that you know the deal is you're going to get an upgrade to Windows 8 for thirty dollars, which tells me that yeah. the actual upgrade one, once we're there is going to be more than that. Well, it's fifteen. You know, you're right. I'm sorry. It's fifteen dollars the the free upgrade. Fifteen. Fifteen dollars upgrade if you buy a PC between now and whenever it is. It's fifteen dollars, and it's to pro. Okay. Yeah, I, th oh, I stand corrected. I thought it was thirty. I, st I still don't think it'd be as cheap as you'd like, but uh, maybe not as much as as Windows Eight. But I don't see the point in really upgrading anything because cause unless you've got the hardware to take advantage of it, I don't think it's really particularly worth it. Yep. <coughs> so excuse me. No, agreed. Agreed. Okay. Well, I think um, I think that we, we can leave it there. Um, just a couple of things I did want to mention as well. Uh, we've got this this case that we've got on the Raspberry Pi here, you can win it. Uh, we're giving away some of these 
thanks to John Alexander from the Shropshire Linux user group. So um, if I'll include a link in the show notes. All we're asking for is tips or little Raspberry Pi hints and tips or whatever you've got uh, to post in the forum, and we'll just pick the five best and give away some of these. So, uh, yeah, if you've got a Raspberry Pi and you want to get a case, just stick some there in the forums. And... Uh, Jose, I know uh, you're not as active on the TDM mobile, so where do we keep up with you then nowadays? Uh, Twitter, I guess, although I'm not very active on Twitter either. <laughs> uh, at Jose Ortiz on Twitter. We, we need some new technology to get you, insi- <laughs> get, no, get you excited. No, normally, normally Jose yeah. is active on, on Twitter when I bait him. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, Jason always- <laughs> Jace- will... <laughs> Go on there, say some nonsense. That's just like no, 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 no. I can't let that go. <laughs> so premeditated. Um, J- Jace, where do we find you? Yeah, uh, you can find me on on Twitter um, at database Jace. Yeah, and I, 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 I about things have got uh, about in the mobile world. When I see Jose selling more devices than he's buying. Oh yeah, all all of my devices are are, are being sold. I uh, actually the it was hilarious. The first one out of all the phones that I put up, the first one to go was a BlackBerry. It was hilarious. <laughs> There's some little note to all of us. Yeah. And uh, thanks to everybody in the chat room. We really enjoyed the uh, the chat in there. Very busy chat room tonight. Uh, so I'll get this posted up. You can watch the video. Uh, you'll be able to listen to the audio. And uh, we should be back probably 8, eight o'clock next, next Tuesday. Who knows we'll have on the show. Oh, actually, I'm not here. <laughs> I'm in Germany. So who knows? I'm not a clue. <laughs> It's a complete lottery. It is, yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, and thanks for everybody in the chat room. Cheers, Dean. Cheers, Jose.